Okay, folks, we're in a very good spot. This would be Ken's fishing hole. So we got real nice marks underneath the boat. We're actually using slabs of other rockfish. Go ahead and drop. Wider on the starboard side. Thank you. Good job, we cut that. Erica. <laughs> Look out the window real quick. Swing your camera. Good job, Justin. Um, 71.5. Feels good. We get this fish back in the water. Nice fish. He's just getting a roller coaster ride straight down. Just mouth open, as you can imagine, like a roller coaster. Ah! Gotcha. Got you. What was that good bait I gave you, huh? Nice red. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Is this really a research trip, or is it just an excuse to come out fishing? Don't tell anybody. This is a horrible job. <laughs> we are standing here on a dock in uh, San Diego. Yeah, I'll get it. Right. We're going out on a fishing trip, if you like, but it's not really a fishing trip as we tend to think of it. My name is Mike Osmond and I work for World Wildlife Fund, the fisheries program. So this is our study site. It's an underwater plateau and it's about 40 miles or 70 kilometers off the coast of San Diego. Flat lines there. We're going out with some scientists from NOAA representatives from the California Sport Fishing Association. And the whole purpose of this trip is to look at how we might utilize science and the participation of the fishing community to address the issue of barotrauma. OK, we're really on top of a nice spot of fish right now. The process that causes barotrauma in these fish, they've got a, a contained bladder of air inside of them called the swim bladder. He's got Popeye, he's got ocular emphysema. Which As it terrible. comes to the surface, the pressure changes and leaks gas into the rest of the body, which eventually makes its way to the eyes, to the stomach, and pushes various parts of the body out. I'm John Hyde. I'm with uh, NOAA Fisheries Service, Southwest Fisheries Science Center in La Jolla. These guys come up in pretty bad conditions. So we'll just take a, a quick DNA sample. And so the quicker that we can reverse this, the quicker that we can alleviate the problems. We've caught a couple of Boccaccio. And we caught a starry rockfish. Bycatch is the unintentional catch of species that you are not targeting. But we still haven't caught, obviously, our target species, which is cow cod. So we try to get the fish back in the water, get them recompressed. He's in. And that's where the sequelizer comes in. And that's where the sequelizer comes in. The sequelizer is a great device in that it has a much stronger grip than a lot of other recompression devices the chance of a fish falling off of it are greatly reduced, and it takes a lot of the thought out of the process. You've got set depths that you can choose, and it will release at 50 or 100 or 150 feet, whichever you choose. You just clip them closed. Pressure activated clam. World Wildlife Fund started the uh, International Smart Gear Competition as a way of looking for innovative solutions to address the problem of bycatch. Sweet. The sequelizer came from a fisherman and his son who are based in Florida. His name is Bill Brown. And uh, they developed this pressure activated device in their garage. The some of the species of rockfish have been aged to over 200 years old. Um, in Southern California, many of our species tend to be shorter lived, but 50, 60, 70 years is not an unheard of maximum life. I think I got it there. Where's your wild spot? Rockfish have been a, a difficult group to manage as a whole. Typically, when they come up from greater depths, they're unable to be released easily. They float at the surface, and they are essentially left to die or get eaten by other predators. I'm just going to push them over to you. You know, most fishermen I know feel bad when you see a fish you brought up and it's floating on the surface. You know, you tend to feel even worse if it's a big fish that you feel it's, you know, 50-year-old cow cod. It, you got to give some something for its life. Because of that one fish, they've closed huge areas of the ocean. All right, you guys, go on, let them go here. In Southern California, the value of the sport fishing industries is a little over $2 billion.
My name is Ken Frankie. I'm president of the Sport Fishing Association of California. Having access to the ocean is uh, real important for us to keep, you know, that business thriving and well. Uh, they came up with a device called the Sequelizer. Okay, they got a cow cod. Cow cod. Got about a 12 pound cow cod that they just caught. Now that transmitter they're putting on there, um, they'll be able to actually track that with the receivers. We have transmitter receivers, 17 of them on the seafloor here. We got our tag on there. The goal right now is to try and rebuild that stock as quickly as we can. Each fish during its lifetime could represent millions of smaller fish at a later date. So every fish that we save is actually exponential because they'll have babies called recruitment and then their recruitment will have babies. So uh, in the long run, uh, you know, one fish really makes a big difference. If you can convince enough people to use these descending devices, then not only are you conserving the resource, but the concern about closing the fishery is not as uh, severe. Nice cow. There we go. Wow. that bullet, Ken. What we're experiencing here is uh, a growing practice of cooperation and collaboration out in the ocean, where the fishermen, the scientists, and the environmental community are actually working together for once, all pulling in the same direction. You talk to most fishermen, and the fish they have to release, they don't want them to die. They want yeah. them to live. There we go. There you go. The Smart Gear competition is a really successful model of uh, a conservation organization working with industry to address a problem. We're not looking to put anyone out of business. We're looking to help them address a problem that they're looking for solutions to. You know, if you can catch a fish and release it safely and they, get, they swim away, that bycatch will live to be caught another day. This is an alternative, which is much better than losing your favorite fishing area.